5 things to do today, to preserve your relationship. The decline of a relationship, is an awful thing to experience. More often than not, it starts slowly, and we hardly notice, the little ways we may be pulling back, or growing apart. Eventually, negative dynamics emerge, and persist for so long, that we have trouble knowing, where to start when it comes to repairing, our connection. When thinking, about where things went wrong, it's important to recognize, that a lot of what ruins relationships, has to do with us. Much of how we act, is based on programming from our past, and defenses we've built, that cause us to overreact, distort, or even provoke the people, we feel closest to. Because the only person we can control, or change in a relationship is ourselves, it's almost always, worth it to do what we can to develop, ourselves before we throw in the towel, on our partner. When things get complicated, with someone we love, sometimes the best thing to do, is go back to the basics. We can start by setting aside, that giant case we've been building, against our partner, and instead start fresh with simple acts, of kindness, affection, and love. This doesn't mean living in a fantasy, or avoiding dealing, with real issues, but it's a means of reconnecting, with warm, loving feelings, we may have cast aside. It's a quest to reignite, what worked about the relationship, so that we, and our partner, can be on the same team, and in a better place when it comes to dealing, with our problems. Here are 5 things, that can help any couple, turn the corner. 1. Express love, in a way your partner, would experience as loving. This may not, sound like a very specific, or especially scientific suggestion, but so often we forget to attune, to our partner, and do the things, we know make them feel loved. Particularly when there's tension in the relationship, we tend to focus, on what we're getting, or not, over what we're giving. We build a case against our partner, and as a defense, we withhold affection, and resist being open, and vulnerable. The more distance created, the more ready, we are to feel critical, or to put our guard up. We start to live more inwardly, getting in our own heads, quantifying, judging, or indulging in a tit-for-tat mentality, about what our partner, does and doesn't do for us. The truth is, it feels really good to be loving. Studies even show that people, get more pleasure from giving, than receiving. It's important, to pay attention to our partner, and engage in kind actions, that he or she would perceive as being cared for. For instance, getting flowers, or going out to dinner, may feel like major romantic gestures, to us, but a partner may prefer, taking some time to joke around, or be affectionate. Try to offer something, that you know will have unique value to them. Engaging in such loving acts actually, makes us feel more in love. 2. Be affectionate. Most couples wonder, how they went from, not being able to keep their hands off each other, to rarely making physical contact. Unfortunately, society tends to justify this pattern, reinforcing the myth, that long-term couples are unsuitable for puppy love, or p, d, a such elimination of affection is a sad, and slow progression, that actually often starts when a couple transitions, from being, you and me, into we. Of course, finding a connection with someone, is thrilling, and meaningful, but when you lose yourself, and your separate identity in the mix, you pave a dangerous road. People feel most attracted, to a partner when they see the person, as someone separate from themselves, someone they are able to love, respect, and appreciate, for their unique qualities. When couples replace substance, real acts of love, with form the practical roles, of being in a relationship, they enter into a fantasy bond. This bond represents an illusion, of connection that actually kills off passion, and attraction. We can keep the spark alive by refusing, to give up our own, natural desire, to express love on a physical level. Hold hands, kiss in public, 
sit close on the couch, touch casually in passing, and you'll be surprised to see the depths of desire, and feelings of intimacy that arise. 3. Slow down. We hear these two words, all the time, but rarely live by them. For most of us, slowing down means plopping on the couch, or zoning out to the TV the minute our chaotic to-do list is done. No matter how hectic our schedule, there are ways to take pause, within our own minds, and reconnect with ourselves, throughout the day. Mindfulness provides a way, of checking in with ourselves, which is one of the essential aspects, of interpersonal neurobiology, expert Dr. Daniel Siegel's, Healthy Mind Platter. Mindfulness allows us, to breathe and be present, in the moment. In these times of reconnection, we are not only more in touch, with ourselves, but we are better able to recognize, and be attuned to our partner. We are more mindful of our actions toward them. We are also more aware of our feelings, of desire and attraction. When we are more present, we can make an effort, to really connect, communicate, and make eye contact. Again, this may feel like a no-brainer, but in truth, looking each other in the eye, is one of the things we forget to do, on a daily basis. Just looking at our partner, and really seeing him, or her as a whole person, separate from ourselves, can further rekindle our empathy, interest and attraction. 4. Try something old. As a relationship advances, it becomes all too easy to make excuses, instead of making time for each other. When we do get together, we may do things out of a sense, of form or obligation. Relationships tend to start, fizzling out when we stop sharing, the lively things we use to share with each other. Moreover, once things start to fizzle out, we become even less inclined, to share these activities. This cycle forces, even more distance between partners. We can challenge this by making a commitment, to take part in activities, we and our partner use to share, and enjoy together. If we use to go on walks, we shouldn't let a long workday, dissuade us from stepping outside. Participating in activities, that light us up, or that light our partner up, helps us stay close, while also feeling, the most ourselves. 5. Try something new. When people, first get together, they often grow each other's worlds, introducing each other, to new people, places, interests, and activities. When we fall in love, we are in the state, in which we feel the most open, and alive. As our relationship progresses, especially if we replace real love, with a fantasy bond, we may start to resist anything new. Especially as we get older, we can become more self-protective, or further drawn to routine. We may start to feel more entitled, to our partner, or more jealous or possessive, and, therefore, put restrictions on each other. In effect, we start to limit, or shrink each other's worlds, rather than expanding them. We can keep love alive, by continuing to be game to try new things. The more adventures we can create, with each other, in our day-to-day -day lives, the more awake we will feel to everything, we experience, particularly intimacy, and closeness. What can you do? In almost every relationship, there comes a time, when we are challenged to the point, of questioning whether to walk away. When I interviewed my friend, Jim Gilligan, who has been married to his wife Carol for almost 50 years, he said, you are not really married, until you realize you can leave, and you don't. I encourage every couple I meet, that has ever felt truly happy, and alive with each other, who ever felt, like the best version of themselves, in their relationship, to stick in there, and try to develop themselves. Otherwise, they are very likely, to repeat the same patterns, in yet another situation, perhaps one that isn't even, as meaningful or rewarding. 
Relationships are a great place to work on ourselves. There is no harm in trying each of the above steps, you truly have nothing to lose. The worst case scenario is that you will have grown your own capacity to be loving, vulnerable, passionate, and lively. The best case scenario? You and your partner grow closer and rekindle your loving feelings for each other. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe.